All right, so what do we got here going on in Golf Clash? They announced the Winter Sun Tournament. The Winter Sun Tournament is going to be on the Kohong Resort Holes. Let's go check out these Kohong Resort Holes. Let's see if they're in the right order. Hold on one second. All right, that only took me about two hours. So what I did was I set up a uh, Golf Clash Winter Sun Rookie Scouting Report, and I put in nine videos here all from the uh, 2019 spring major this is the first time that we ever played these holes <coughs> so normally the way it works the first time that we play some holes is minimum score for every tournament's minus 24 and you got to look at the holes and usually the first time around depending on the holes but with the way that the newer holes play um usually the first time you you, you catch a set of holes minus 28 plus is usually kind of in the range where we're picking up four we're picking up two on the front and two on the back and typically that's the way it goes the second time we play these sets of holes especially the second time we play the full set typically now people have gotten the par four stuff figured out and all three of these par fours are pretty tough and usually the second time it really you need to be thinking minus 30. now you're in the now you're in the plus three per side. So it's really going to be important for us to uh, try and give ourselves some really good shots on these holes. And I will tell you more than any other course that we play, Kohang Resort is one of the ones that I play. I, I'm going to play totally aggressive this week. I'm not, just not messing around. So we're going to play these holes in the exact same order that they are in Golf Class Notebook. So you can go to Golf Clash Notebook and go to Kohong Resort, and we're going to play one through nine, straight up. So hole number one, um, extra mile. You can play this hole in a ton of different ways. One-on-one, -on -one, man, I really don't like hitting over here, but in one-on-one -on -one I do. It's hard when you hit over here when you're coming to the hole. Where you're going to be at is where you can engage this over here. And usually when I come here, it's marginal whether I can get into that spot and have enough backspin. Really what you should be doing if you're hitting over here is starting on this side and bouncing it over and then running it up to the cup. I don't really like the look of it from over here, but in one-on-one -on -one it's a pretty consistent play. It's pretty easy to get over here. You can get out into this area right here. This is another area that I lay up to where I don't try and get around the bend. I don't try and pick up any forward distance. My goal is to get right out into this area so that I'm coming in at the cup this way and I've got the sand off to the right, and it gives me a pretty straight up line to it, so then I can run it up. Got plenty of room here that where I can either come up short and use backspin, or I can stay back long and use a little bit of topspin and try and finesse it into the hole. What I'm going to do here, and before I talk about what I'm going to do, let's talk about what everybody else does. I see a ton of people trying to get down into this area, so they've got this shot. This is a great shot from here. Short iron. Depending on the ball you bring, I'm pretty sure it's always going to be short iron, but I'm pretty sure it's always going to be short iron, no matter what kind of ball you bring. But they're trying to get into this, so you can tell. Let's let's look at where the tee box is at. <laughs> All right, and we're seeing kind of an S shape, a reverse S shape here. So we're going from here, and we're trying to get out to this area. So you've got to contend with this. So that means you've got to go around it, which puts you on this type of trajectory. But then you want the ball to do the S in order to end up over here. So it can be a little bit tricky. And it's all about bounce, steady, bounce, steady, bounce. What's going to happen is, is you're going to be very close here with your first bounce. And then at some point, either on your second or your third bounce, you're going to come very close here. So if you're off trajectory to the right, you could end up getting, getting caught up at the beginning. And if you're off trajectory to the left, you may be fine at the beginning, but you'll get caught up at the end. What I'm going to do... And there's, there's several ways that you can achieve a similar result. And then it's all about distance to the cup. Is you can come here with a club that's got a lot of curl and start off up in this area. And not doing a max OP hook, just a max curl. And you can bring it around so that what your goal when you're thinking about curl and you're leaving the tee box and you're trying to get off in this direction is bounce number one is right here and bounce number two is over here so you've got to split this difference and the more curl you put on it you can see the way that the the more you put on it the farther you have to get the ball to go before you clear the rough 
and it doesn't really do you any good to do this much work and then clip the rough right here and just bleed out and be in this area right here you're still shorter to the cut but the whole goal is to get forward run to try and get out into this area you can do a max overpower hook shot here and let me look at my notes fully extended fully extended so from here I'm going to be fully extended out into this area and at the fully extended point my white ring is going to be right on fully extended right on maybe into the rough just a little teeny bit and then when I let the ball relax it's going to pull pull my my ring set here and my white ring is going to be out here what I'm going to do when I set this shot up the first time is instead of doing it fully extended where my white ring's out here, I'm going to do a fully extended where my white ring's out there and I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to find a spot here because it's easier to work the shot when you when you can just push it up against the red line and you can scoot it over. And this is one of those shots where it's super, you want to be, because it's at the very end of your run, Typically with this type of max overpower hook shot, if, you, if you're catching the fairway, you're fine. It's at the very end of the run, you've got a very narrow little window here. This narrow little window to get yourself, you're coming in from this direction and you've got to come up to the cup. So if you were coming in from this direction where you had it wide open, you're going away from the hole. So you're going to have to engage these two traps. And what I find a lot of times is either I'm just a little teeny bit to the left, so when I bounce through, I came in like this, and I'll catch right here and end up getting caught up in the rough. Or I made it through here, and I made the I made the bounce and actually cleared this, and then came up and then dribbled into the sand. I will tell you that I would rather take this shot right here from the sand than a shot that's then to do a layup shot or to shoot over to this spot right here. Because really it boils down to when you're in the sand or the rough that close up, it really just boils down to hitting it perfect. If you hit it perfect, it will go in the hole. But there's three holes in this Kohang Resort that I'm gonna do max overpower hook shots on and I believe it might be all three of the par fours. And there's one of the par fours that I've played a max overpower hook shot on in the past and I'm going to play it totally different. I'm going to figure out a totally different way to play that hole than I've ever played it before. I'm going to bring out a different club, different balls, and I'm going to try, because we now have the practice session, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to play that hole. If I have to, I'll play it 20 times, but I'm going to figure out a different way to play one of the par fours. But this one here, I'm definitely going to play a max overpower hook, and I will get an opportunity to uh, kind of dial that in. Now, what we've had in the past, at least the one, I think we've had this hole twice, is the wind was blowing in this direction. <coughs> and so you were able to work that wind out. If in the tournament, because we have varying winds now, we're getting headwind, um, it's going to... I'm going to have to look at the shot and see what I can do. I'll either have to bring out a ball that's got low wind three power three side spin low wind or i'll have to bring out something to see if i can kind of combat against it but we'll have to adjust for headwind as the week goes on max overpower hook i want to get on the green with the max overpower hook shot you can get on the green or right off the green in one and you're taking a chip all right this hole right here <laughs> so there are several ways that you can come at this hole traditionally. You can bounce it from here. If you catch this hole in one-on-one, -on -one, depending on what ball you have and what clubs you have in your bag, you could find yourself in between clubs down in, in this zone where you don't have enough of a club at this range in order to do backspin to get it on, so you've got to come out, you've got to move down a club. And what I'm going to bring is a sniper and a navigator. And that'll put my red line somewhere in this range right here. And I'm going to start off, I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to do one per ring, even though it's in minimum club. And that's where I'm going to start. And then I'm going to start making adjustments to try and dial it up to the cup from that point. So let's think about how that math works. With my sniper at max, it's 1.0 per ring. It's 1.1, 1.3 is what I believe it is. Let me look. Let me make sure I'm giving you good information. 1.2, 1.3. 1.2, 1.3. 1.2, 1.3. 1.2, 1.3. 1.2, 1.3. 1.2, 1.3. 1.2, 1.3. 1
0.2, 1.3. So I'm at minimum club. And you've got to make sure when you're down here that you leave yourself enough room. I'm going to try and be in the habit of, in the past where I was setting it up, I was, I was using five backspin. And then I was dialing in the right hand side spin to get it right up to the cup. But what I'm going to do is I'm, the spot that I'm looking for this week <coughs> is I want to give myself about five rings off of this so that I can always adjust out wind and I don't have to change ball as the week goes on. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to try and be about five rings off my red line. And even though I'm doing one, okay, so I'm at minimum club. That's 1.3. Sorry about that. I was a brain fart. 1.3 per, per ring. So just let's just say we had a 2.6 wind. And we're not doing any adjustment as far as elevation or anything. I'm not going to start off doing anything. And we did a one point, and we did minimum club at 1.3. That's two rings. Okay. So we play it at two rings. But if I do a max adjustment, even though I'm at minimum club, for this 2.6, I'm going to move it 2.6 rings. So let's say we did a 30% wind adjustment or an elevation adjustment. Because when you look at this hole, it is way downhill. I mean, this 2D picture doesn't do it justice. You are way of the hell up here, and the flagpole is way the hell down here. And this landing zone is kind of like in this area. You're way downhill. So... Typically, when I'm playing a hole in one-on-one -on -one and I see a, a shot like this that's way downhill, I am I immediately, just as a matter of course, will always add on 30%. Or I'll make an adjustment to it. But here, but here what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to start my week and I'm going to try and dial this in during the practice round, is I'm going to start off at one per ring. I'm going to start off acting like I was at my max red line up here. Even though I'm at minimum club here, and I'm not going to do any elevation adjustment, because I'm already doing a 30% wind adjustment by doing this right here. So if I need to make an additional adjustment, and what I may find when you do stuff like this is you may find is that instinctively we're almost always prone to want to add wind on, but this may be one of those deals but that by using max club, even though I'm at min, it doesn't need a 30%. Maybe it only needs a 25%. So maybe I have to take off 5%. Or I have to make some other adjustment that's on it. So I'm going to start my week so that I have a spot, a, a known spot to start at. I'm going to start out at one per ring. And I'm going to go straight at the cup. And then we'll see if I need to make any adjustments. Because this is typically, like on a hole like this, this is typically what I do... And when I want, I would know that I'm at minimum club, I'm hitting max, so I'm making a 30% wind adjustment, and I would go straight at it. So we'll see how it is. And I'm going to try and find the spot where I'm somewhere in the five backspin, dial in the right-hand side spin, and see where it puts me on my red line. That's, that's my plan, at least. Hole number three. Hole number three. All right. There's really only one way to go on this hole is you're from the tee box we can get the tee box, this is a big ass par 5 is you're coming along down this track right here I've never seen anybody have any success up here at the top now I suppose, because your red line with a 3 power ball with an extra mile is like somewhere like down in this area so it's not like you can start off over here with a power 3 ball and see if you can try and curl it around and let's see where that would put you, hold on the deal is is that even if you, let, let's just say everything was perfect, you did a max over power hook, you got everything going your way, you used top, max top spin, big topper, and you got the trajectory right, and it ended up down in here, and you're right here. Okay, Your drive to the cup has a tree in front of it. <laughs> Anything that you were out in here, you're now coming at an angle where you're coming to this in order to get to the spot and then you immediately need it to turn in order to get towards the cup. So in my opinion, I this spot out here is only the reason that they keep the grass up so nice is so that when we're having tournaments, this is a path and there's a lot of spectators and stuff out there. Because they're all watching us hit our ball down this, this lane right here. Okay. 
Now the shot to the cup, I this is one of those pads I like to start at the top. You can, if you get deep enough down into this hole, if you get deep enough down here, you can, you could potentially do it with a sniper, I guess, if you get down there far enough, but you can with a guardian. And I suppose you could use a horizon, but your accuracy is a little low. And the thing with a horizon is, is that the if you hit it perfect, it's great. But if you hit a horizon great to the left or the right, it is way the hell great to the left or the right. But if you bring a bigger club, you can get to the point where you can start off on this side. And the way that the topography works over here is here's the sand trap. And then it comes up to the hill. And then it comes down. And then it's coming up to the green. So when you're coming over the top of this hill and engaging this hill, this is one of those areas where you can do the the rough bump on the fairway and so you can pinch yourself and there's another hole in this tournament that's a par three that's that's got the same effect where you can hit depending on where you're at in this hill you can you can effectively use this as a rough bump and you can scoot yourself right to the cup i've seen people try and do rough bumps off the top up here and roll it down but I, that, you're way too far away in my opinion and the way that the topography works it's better to use the fairway rough bump because if you make a mistake you, you were set up for this area you're still going to stay on the green okay because the worst thing that can happen to you in a rough bump is you miss the rough <laughs> I try and bounce over from here because I usually don't get the distance out here. I'm usually not looking for the distance out there. I think the shot from the top of the hill, you've got a great shot. And you're getting a very similar effect where your first bounce is at the top, your second bounce is kind of in the same area, and then it makes the ball guide flat, not relatively quick. You've got a great look for ball guide here. This hole, I think, is going to be a very tricky hole when it comes to directional wind because this is one of those holes that I've had, I've I've shot a lot of Albies on this hole, but I've I've been in the right spot to get an Albie and hit perfects and didn't get an Albie way more times <laughs> than I've got an Albie. And it's one of those holes that it, you can, you do have a serious chance of getting an Albie here. I'm going to use the bounce. Now this area up here, typically I tell people, if you watch my stuff on a regular basis, is that always stay two rings off of any transitional surface. But this is one of those types of fairway pads that as long as we don't have a really strong tailwind, you can kind of creep up on this, this area right here because this pad looks like this. And so at the end of the pad, the, the pad ends here and the rough starts. And so it's a nice flat transition. There's no curvature to the course. Because a lot of times you'll see courses where you come to an area like this where it, it goes rough and then into sand and it'll curve off a little bit and the rough is from here to here and then you're in the sand. And this one, it's just flat. So you can eke yourself up a little bit. Try and find a, a, a spot. I'm usually going to be two rings off. So it's really easy for me though when I come back to a hole like this and it's like, hey, I can push myself up there. How far do you normally like to push yourself? Two rings. Sometimes I'm three, just depending on the hole. But this is one of those holes that you can push yourself forward a little bit more if it works out better for your bounces. Great Albie shot here, though. I'm going to bring a QB, a Kingmaker, a Sniper, four backspin, one per ring. I'm going to start off at just the max. It's at max club. I'm going to start off at max, and I'm going to work it from there. And I know that we've been on this hole where we've I, I've done all kinds of adjustments on this hole and I've had, like I said, I've had some success, but I'm going to just start off at the base number and just work it this week because every round I'm going to try and get it better. Hole number four, Kohong Resort. What is hole number four? Come on, come on. All right, this is the hole right here. This par three. So here's, you see the 2D. Let, let's see if I can draw today. So here's the... Here's this pad. It's coming kind of up a hill and down a hill and then up the hill and then down towards the green and here's the flag pole. So I'm just going to cut off just this part right here because this is typically the I'm you're I am never going to once again. I mean, 
if the greenskeepers just let this be rough and this was what we were shooting at, it would be fine with me because I don't ever want to use that. Maybe if you were playing in from the master's tees, you know, that's the place that you have to hit. But if you're playing from Ricky, I'm definitely going to play up front. And I think in pro, you're going to play the same distance. You're just going to be in your wood instead of your long iron. I want to play on this side right here. This this topography looks like this, where you're at the bottom, it comes up the hill, comes down the hill, comes onto the green, and here's the flagpole. And I see the mass majority of the people that I play against when we get this hole play it right here. They play on this side of the hill. They play somewhere over here in this playing field. And I am absolutely not interested in that for several reasons let's say let's talk forward and back if you're side to side it's not really going to make a big deal as long as your is your trajectory is right but but front and back here's your heel and if you set your shot up and it hits right here your ball guide's telling you that the ball is going to do this kind of a hop and it's going to make this deal but if, if your shot gets pushed, if you had front uh, tailwind and the shot got pushed up a little bit and you hit it on this part, it's going to bounce a little higher. Or it's going to bounce a little flatter. And the trajectory is going to be different. So anything that your ball guide told you that your ball was going to do when it was moving forward, from the first bounce on, it was lying its ass off to you because you didn't hit in that spot. You got pushed forward, so now it makes this trajectory. Or it hits down here where it's even steeper and it makes a bigger trajectory going this way. And so when you're playing on a hill and you're hitting on the hill face, it's super dangerous when you have have headwind and tailwind because if you get thrown off a position, it'll it you're Basically, you didn't have any ball guide after the first bounce because you have no idea where it's going to go. It, it could end up in a very similar spot or you see those people and you, they hit the shot and they were only like one ring off. And you're like, you know, they hit a great to the right. And it's like, hey, you watched the shot. It didn't look like it was set up that bad, but they hit a great to the right. And all of a sudden they end up in the sand trap over here. It's because they're hitting off of an, up, an uphill face and all kinds of crap can happen. I always want to hit on the downhill face. Because the downhill face, typically these are those types of shots when you're using this type of shot where you're trying to do a rough bump in the fairway. And if you're a little forward or a little bit back, it'll, it'll, it'll change the length. Typically, if you hit a little bit farther back, the ball will be long. And if you hit a little bit farther forward, the ball will be short. But you're still going to be right on track to the cup. Your ball guy's not lying to you. It's just the distance. And so I always want to hit off of these, these faces where we can get that effect. Because what happens? Your ball hits the ground. If you got the wind adjustment right from there to where it hit the ground the very first time, from that point on, it's acting like a rough bump. So wind's not really a factor. If you got this one right, you can get the rest of it's going to stay on track. This is a great hole. I think, and I hope that they never... I, I encourage... It's nice to have par threes that are tough, but it's also nice to have par threes like this that are hole in oneable. And when the game first came out, there was a lot of the par threes that were, I'm not gonna say that they were, they were more hole in oneable than they are now, but it wasn't like you went to that hole and it was like, hey, you go to that hole and you get a hole in one. You still had to hit it perfect and you still had to set it up and you still had to make a great wind adjustment, but, but it was one of those deals where you could get it in there. This is one of those holes. This, I hope they never take holes like this out of the game because this is a fantastic hole and we have to maximize our opportunities on this. If there's any of the par threes or any of the holes that we want to get our wind adjustment down, it's this hole. So steal from whoever you want, talk to your teammates, borrow the numbers. But when, it, when you talk to people about a hole like this, it's not like, hey, what are you doing? Oh yeah, I'm doing a 10% adjustment. Okay, what club are you using? What ball are you using? What are your base numbers? You're doing a 10% of what? Are you doing a two per ring with that club and I'm doing a one or what, what are you doing? So if you're gonna get information from people, try and get as much information as you can. You know the deal. I love that hole. That is a great, I'm gonna be disappointed every time I get on this hole and if I don't get a hole in one because this is one of those types of holes. 
All right. Another very difficult par four. I mean, look at hole number one, this par four. I mean, this is a pretty difficult par four. Hey, okay. hole number four. Or excuse me, hole number five. Another difficult par four. Now, in one-on-one -on -one play, I play it this way. I either play with a QB or a rock. Obviously, I prefer a rock if you have one, but if you don't have one, a QB works fine. And with a marlin, you can start off along this transitional surface between the fairway and the rough. You pull your 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 ball out until you're 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 at the red line and you're three rings of separation off of this transitional surface. Now with a, with a QB, if you've got an upper developed QB, I'm gonna be four rings off of this transitional surface. And if I have a rock, especially if I have an upper developed rock, if I have a, a lower developed rock or up to a level seven rock, I'm gonna do pretty much exactly what I do with a QB. But if you've got a level eight rock, I would be five rings. I'm going to be five rings of separation off of this. You do max top spin, max right hand side spin, max curl, no overpower, and you'll end up in the shadows somewhere in this quadrant. Now, if you put overpower on it with a rock and a and a marlin, you can get farther up in here. The farther you can get forward. If you draw a line here where this rough comes through, the farther that you can get, the closer that you can get to that line, the less curl or side spin or movement it takes in order to get to the cup. You'll have to have some side spin. It helps on this hole if you have a at least a two side spin, three side spin ball. Depending on how far you're getting out here. If you're finding yourself ending up way down at the tip, a two side spin ball will be fine. Maybe even a one. But if you're finding yourself ending up up here, when you go to go to the cup, you're going to have to engage this rough up here and move out away from it and then have to bring yourself back to the cup so you'll need more side spin. So don't commit yourself necessarily to any particular ball because you could get out here. You can get out there. If you can get out there with a marlin, it's a max shot with a sniper. You can get out there with a low wind ball so that you're taking your second shot with a low wind ball. I wouldn't even be, you know, be thinking about necessarily bringing out a big power ball. You don't have to do overpower to get out here into a good spot, depending on your clubs. And you can use an extra mile. This is a big fairway. The reason that I like to use a rock and a QB on a shot like this is because a lot of times I will do max overpower on this. And damn, the fairway is so freaking big up here that with a rock and a QB down here, if your trajectory was on the inside down here, but you made the fairway, you're going to end up here. If it was on the outside, you're going to end up there. So, I mean, you got tons of room here if you've got an accurate club. Great shot to the cup. The way I'm going to take this, <laughs> oh, let me. there is one other way. You can lay it up to right here. And from here, you have three options. You can bounce off this island. You can do a rough bump. Or you could bring a backspin club and start off on the green. So you have three options if you start up here at the top of the hill. I think really, for me, if I was doing the rough bump or trying to set up for the rough bump, the only way that I would do the rough bump is if the wind was blowing in line with the rough. Or if I was like, because this is one of those areas, f for me as a player, this is one of those areas that sometimes like I'm just dinking around or I'm demoing and I'm just trying something out or I'm seeing, I'm trying to figure out what the number is. And so you end up in the sand down here, but anytime you're around water, sand, <laughs> and this type of an environment, these wind adjustments down here when you get to the cup are super, can be super critical. I actually think that, because I haven't played to this island in a long time, but I the last time we had this hole in a tournament, I played to the island down here. I was having to play to this island because I was ending up in the sand on the shot that I'm going to take. And so I would use the, I would go from the sand to the island and come up. And I was doing like a 50% wind adjustment. It is way in the hell downhill from up here. It's like up here and you're way down here when you get down around the bend as it snakes down this hill. It's way, way downhill. But I was doing a very big wind adjustment. So I'm not sure if you're hitting from the top of the hill what your wind adjustment's going to be. But I wouldn't be surprised 
if it wasn't big. And if if you're hearing a a big number, or if you're having problems and you're ending up in the in a bad spot, be very very cognizant of your first bounce when you're taking a shot like this from up here, because you want to set it up like the very first time you come to this hole and you're up here at the top. Here, let me zoom in a little. You're up here at the top. You're coming down into this area. Give yourself three rings, if you can, of separation so that you got tons of room. And make just a normal adjustment. <laughs> this is why it's so important to, to film yourself. And just make a normal adjustment. And don't worry about necessarily, if you can't get going straight to the cup, don't worry about that. Just get it going in this area so that you know you're out here and you can recover. And then be super cognizant of where that first bounce landed. And... If you're up over here and you're like, damn, I made just a normal wind adjustment and I still almost clipped the rough, then you can kind of get an idea of, of what kind of an adjustment that you need to make. But I do believe, and I know from the sand coming this way, um, on my notes, I wrote to do a 50% wind adjustment. But that's just me. That sounds crazy, but that's just me. What I'm doing on this hole. <laughs> All right, let me look at my notes. Extra mile, kingmaker, max overpower hook. Six, right hand side spin. Five, top spin. And those numbers may get adjusted a little as the week goes on. Blue ring at rest, slightly in the fairway. So I'm off in this direction right here. I've got three ring, blue ring is slightly into the fairway. So if we were zooming in on that, my blue ring would just come slightly into it. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to start. That's where I'm going to start my adjustments. And I'm always going to take the wind out. So it doesn't matter to me what direction the wind is blowing. If the wind's blowing in this direction. Now, obviously, if I'm getting some headwind, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to adjust out the side wind and the headwind. And if I'm getting headwind, I'm probably going to add on like 10%. And I may up that number as the week goes on. Typically with this, and, and I'm doing it not because I can get any of the headwind out, but I want to make sure that my trajectory stays right. So I'll have to see how this hole goes uh, as the week goes on. But here's the best that this shot can get you. The best that this shot can get you is you're right there. And you've got, and this is flat very flat. If there's any adjustment, it's going to be very, very, very slight. Very flat shot with a hornet. The last time we played this hole and I was in this area, I was working up. It seemed like I needed to do um, like plus 5, plus 10%. I needed to make a little bit of an adjustment on it. But that's my goal is to try and get out of that area. But I'm going to work this week because I have something that I didn't have before. I have an APOC 5, and an APOC 5 has a lot more distance, some topspin, curl, than an APOC 4, and it has a shit ton more than, a, than an extra mile, and I may not have to do a hook on this at all. What I may be able to do is come out into this area, my red line's like up in, in here, I may be able to come out in here and be able to curl it around. Now, I'm not sure how that'll work. Um, it'll depend, this is, I know, maybe getting off track here but let, let's talk about this if you're trying to get I'm trying to get here okay let's let's zoom back so we can see the whole damn picture you're trying to get here from here but your red line is here <laughs> and so when you come out to your red line and then you're trying to make this turn the farther forward you get you can only make so much of a turn so your club may only be able to make this much of a turn. So if you push that forward and you brought out a bigger ball or you bring out a bigger club, then you're just pushing yourself farther forward. You can't do anything. If you bring out a club like an APOC versus an extra mile, which has a lot more curl, a lot more curl, whereas with an extra mile, if I was here, I may get this. With an APOC, I may get this. And it may put me right out there. But what I may find is is that I'm actually too far forward in the shot. And so what I have to do is, even though I'm using an apocalypse and I'm doing this stuff, I may have to pull the shot back 
Now, sometimes that means that you may be able to go from a power three ball to a power two ball because you're not having to use all that anyways. But sometimes you don't need the power two ball or the power three ball for the drive, but you need it for where it puts you on the second shot. I would want to bring, if I was trying to get out into this area right here, I would want to bring the biggest ball that I could. And the reason is, is that, and I want to bring something that's got low wing because I want to give myself a really good opportunity when I'm out here, but I want to bring something that gives me the best opportunity to get into the best club that I can or get me deeper into that club. But I may be able to come out into this spot right here with an apocalypse and or a rock, because I have a rock eight now and I didn't have that the last time I played this. And a rock's distance might be just right where I could be at max club with a power three ball, three side spin, max curl. And the deal about doing the max curl is, and side spin is, is with that club, you can get on max curl or max side spin and top spin because it doesn't have a lot of top spin. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this hole. I'm trying I'm gonna see if I can work on this hole where we can take the shot from the fairway and not have to do the max overpower hook. And the only reason I'm 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 trying to figure that out is because we have this varying wind. When we knew which way the wind was blowing before for the tournament, we could work it out. So if I knew I was gonna have a headwind here, I could just work this shot out. And I, had a, and I had several rounds to be able to do it in. But with varying wind here, I want to have something that's a little bit more consistent. And if I'm in this area right here, I may be able to get around. So we'll have to, I'll have to work with my club to find out what club and what ball combo can do it. Because you're going to have to have a club that's got a lot of damn topspin. Because the first bounce is going to be out here. And you want the second bounce to be out here. So you need to go, you need to be able to clear that in a bounce. And so you, the only way you're going to do that is if you can, is if you've got some topspin, so that you can start stretching these bounces out to be able to clear that. So I'll have to see what I've got in my inventory to see if I can try and get out here without having to do the max or power hook. That's what I'm going to work on this week. I'm going to work on this whole all the par fours. I know people are going to be working. I'm going to I'm continuing to work on these par fours because I'm convinced that we can get in all of them. We can get into really good spots to try and maximize our getting eagles we need to pick up three per side and if we could do it by just getting the par fours and not have to worry about anything else then everything else is gravy all right what hole is that that was hole number five hole number six hole number six all right okay let's do some math here's the tee box we're trying to get somewhere along this line, right? We're trying to get somewhere out in this area. If we could get all the way out here, hey, more power to us. But with a Marlin, your red line's like back in this area. Well, on Tour 7, so in, in Ricky, it's, your red line's probably up in here. It's pretty easy to get over the Marlin. You can get way up here to the tip. Hey, we're talking about this lower truck. If you end up in this area right here, X marks the spot. X marks the spot. With a Marlin from that area, I, I'm not sure if you can get deep enough up in this hole in order to use this rough bump. But you can come off over here to the side and you can have a shot coming at it with a Marlin. So if you bring a bigger ball, um, you're easily you, you've got tons of choices. You can do a rough bump. You can do the you can come in front and come out it you, There's all different ways that you can do it But when you're out in this area right here, you're gonna be in your wood So if you're in your wood from right here, what the hell are you in from out here? <laughs> okay, this is another one of those fairways in the game where this is where the spectators are standing while we're all hitting our shots out into this fairway And okay, nobody hits their ball out here. You you're gonna hit a spectator Stay out of that. Now, I suppose if you got way down in there, there may be some shot where you could pick up the tip and you could try and run it in. But you better be in the right spot and you better bring the right stuff or you're going to have serious problems. Because I think even with a big dog, if that's all... That, I'm not sure why, why this is here other than for the crowd. Lower. We do have... Shot, we do have different ways that we can come in at it. We can use this. I'm going to try and use the rough bump. I'm going to try and get out here deep enough that I can use the rough bump. And I'm not sure. It seems like in the past I 
I'm pretty sure with the distance away from the cup that you are is that you're going to have to use a sniper. But we, we've got several options here. I'll have to go back out and see what, what our options are on this. What hole is this again? This is hole number six. What do my notes say? Sniper coming in. But I didn't talk about with the sniper. I think the shot that I was taking in the video is I might have been doing a bounce over from here and then bouncing it over and running it up to the cup. But I wasn't trying to get max distance out here. I was basically doing a very simple layup that was almost guaranteed to end me up in a spot so that I could get this shot to get an Albi. And this was a very consistent shot. Where I was trying to get more distance up in here where I could open up the rough or I could take different avenues to it. I wasn't willing, if the reward up here is awesome. But the risk is, is that you get caught in here. If you get caught in the lower spot, you can recover. But if you get caught up here in the top, you're screwed. Now, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not saying that this is the way to go, but let's let's draw our line here. See where the T box is? Yeah, that's not what I want. See where the T box is at right here? We're coming down this fairway and we're trying to come down into this area. So a lot of times what will happen is you may be off trajectory on the drive and you run out of fairway out here and it bleeds out. Now if you get unlucky, it'll bleed out into the bunker, but you can go quite a ways before it gets to the bunker, but you may get caught in the bunker. But this area right here, because it narrows up and you've got to be on this trajectory going up. I think this is one of those holes. Let me see if this is the one I wrote that down on. Uh, that was on one of the other ones. I, If you're in this area right here and you've got a Nirvana, you can take your Nirvana from this area right here and this sand, you can set your ball guide so that your ball guide's going, the center, the bullseye of your ball guide's going right along that area. I believe I had, I believe I had my, I was right at my bullseye. Sometimes when I set these shots up, I'll have my white ring. I try and keep it simple. But I think I was I was dead bullseye right on it. Max top spin, max left hand side spin. And you can do a max overpower hook shot and you'll catch it right here and it'll bridge the gap and it'll roll you up and you can actually recover. I've actually taken that shot and got unlucky and overshot it. But typically you end up right up there with a short pitch. You can do the same thing with your sand wedge. But here's the difference between the Spitfire the Spitfire hits as far as your Nirvana, almost, probably more, but different. So your Nirvana from here is at 135. And so when you're coming out, you're at 135 yards as its max distance. And your Spitfire, but it only has like, what, 45, 50, somewhere in that top spin? Where your Spitfire's got 120, but it's 100% top spin. Or it's got really, it's got a lot of top spin. And so distance-wise, you're probably getting more from your Spitfire, but when you're out here on this trajectory, you're not getting out as far. And what I've found is that my sand wedge, because your sand wedge and your rough iron curl a lot, <laughs> is that when I'm out here with my sand wedge, instead of trying to get to the spot that I know where I should be at with my Nirvana, I want to ride this sand along until I can get to the spot where I'm still in the same spot and it pulls me farther out. That way it gets my bounce in here so that I can get over. But you can recover with a Spitfire and a Nirvana. I've done it many, many times in one on one with a Nirvana. So these numbers, once again, these numbers will change if you've got a bigger ball and stuff. So you may have to practice it. it the deal is, is that if you get out there and you've never practiced before, you could at least try it. Okay. If you don't do that, I mean, if, if you're in desperation, you could try it. The key thing is, is if you get in that area, just put yourself out in the clear so you have a nice clean shot. But if you're really trying to go for it or you feel comfortable doing max overpower hook shots, there are a couple to recover. Straight up. Hole number seven. All right. This is the other par four. And this hole right here, I don't have a max overpower hook shot set up on. But I'm going to work something out. And once again, I'm back to rock eight. And an APOC. APOC 5 plus. 
and I'm gonna see what I can do to get around this corner and once again it's not it's not necessarily that you can't get around that corner it's bridging the gap between where your first bounce is here and your second bounce is here having to get clear that whole gap and the, and the farther you bring your shot to the right in order to get trajectory going to the hole the shorter the, the longer you have to hit the shot in order to get past that point so I'm not sure what it'll take to get up there but I'm gonna I'm I'm trying to go for the green here and I don't know that I can get all the way up there but if I can get up into this area right here I'd be happy but I'm gonna work on this hole right here I'm gonna work on this hole I'm gonna bring out and it and this is one of those holes where it may be a rock and a kingmaker it may be a rock and a in a katana it may be an apocalypse and a quasar it may be an extra mile in a marlin but i'm going to figure out what it takes on this hole i plan i've got a whole bunch of practice tokens i plan on burning them on these holes and i'll i'll video those as i do them because i'm gonna i'm gonna come out and just burn some stuff i'm gonna start off with titans and start off with just the normal balls until i can figure out what power ball i need and then go from there but i'm going to be working on this hole all week in one-on-one -on -one, I typically play to right out there. That's the simple, safe and simple. I actually don't like the, you can lay it up right here, coming into the hole, but this little peninsula of, uh, that comes out here, when you come to the hole, I don't know, this hole, I don't like this approach over here. I don't like the way that the terrain's running. There's something going on over here, and I, I, haven't, I haven't taken this shot enough because I don't like that approach. I don't like that type of approach. I don't like the way that it rolls out. So normally I take the shot from over here and from over here, just depending on what equipment you bring. So if you're bringing a Marlin, more than likely you're gonna to have to bounce off the island and bounce it over. If you bring out a little bit bigger stuff or bring out the right stuff for the clubs that you got, you can do a rough bump along this. And so this is one of those perfect T rough bumps that I like, especially if the wind is blowing in these directions. Because if the wind is blowing, I mean, you really have to get it right when you're going this way. <laughs> you really have to get it right. And you want to make sure that when you're pulling your ball back, you're dead center. You don't want to be over, over power or under power or anything. Got to make sure you get all that stuff right. Typically when you've got side wind, if you make a mistake and you don't do a great wind adjustment, you're just off to the left or the right and you're still there. But there is a great rough bump here. You can also start off on the other side and you can use more backspin and you'll need more backspin. It's pretty short. It's short enough that you can do a rough bump. So if you're on the other side, you'll have to woe it up really quick. So we have a bunch of different ways that we can come at it from this side, depending on what equipment we bring. If you're hitting it straight forward out here and just literally not trying to get any, any of this around the corner, just trying to lay it up into this spot, you do have a pretty nice shot coming at the cup. This peninsula, because of the way that I like to set my shots up, pushes me out. And so now my ball guide's going like this. And so now I have to address this bringing it back to the cup. Or I need to get farther in front. So instead of setting my shot up out here on the peninsula where I'm half, where it's pushing my trajectory off this way, I'm trying to bring it around the bend so that I'm coming back to the hole and I'm trying to set it up more up in this area. And I think it's hard to get up into that area unless you get forward distance around the bend then you can get up on it where you can get your first bounce to be in front of all of that and then you're going straight at the cup and i don't mind those types of shots i just don't like having to go like this around a bend where my first bounce is here this close to the cup i'm not sure if you can do a max overpower hook shot here with these trees because from the tee box we're going to be trying to get our trajectory coming out and I'm not sure if these trees aren't in our way. I know that we can do a max curl shot here. Because I've done max curl shots here many times. And I've ended up in this area out here quite a few times. I've clipped the rough in here quite a few times. Clipped the rough out here quite a few times. Trying to get your... Trying to find the sweet spot. Where I know that from here to here I can bridge the gap. But if I start off right here. So that I can get my trajectory to come through here. I can't bridge this gap. So I have to keep pushing it forward until I get to a spot that's narrow enough. And that'll dictate what you can do because you may have to get, you know, if you had a club that didn't have a lot of curl, 
You know, that's not, but it's got, and it doesn't have a lot of top spin. You got to find the right club ball combo. <laughs> I love this course. This is one of those courses I haven't we I haven't played this course. I've played this course a ton because it's in Tour Seven, and I typically play Tour Seven and and so I I'm very very familiar with the holes, but I hardly ever play them like this. Like what I'm talking about today, I hardly ever play them like this because I I don't really want to come out here in one on one and waste a kingmaker to try and get up there when I know that in one on one if I'm on in two. I make my putt. I get. We're gonna go to a shootout, and a lot of times people end up in trouble. I'm gonna work on this hole. This is gonna be one of the holes. I haven't decided how I'm gonna play this hole yet. I don't know. I may just play the little layup shot over here and go straight out. I've done that quite a bit, and I've came out here. But if I don't feel like I'm getting, I really, if I'm coming out here, my whole goal, if I'm coming out into this direction, is to get into at least my short iron range. Because I know from out here, it feels like this is a long iron shot. So if I can't drop down to a short iron and have a run at the cup, then this effort, if this effort is just getting me into a long iron, then why am I taking a bunch of risk out here when I can hit a long iron shot from here and I've got three different ways that I can approach the cup. Now I have choices. What I don't like here is, is that this rough bump with varying wind, that could be a moving target. And hitting from over here and then trying to come up because of the amount where your second bounce has to be in front of that rough, you can very easily find yourself clipping that rough and ending up in a little bit of trouble. So maybe doing the shot that where you're just starting off on the cup. This is going to be a hole I'm, I'm going to work on. I haven't decided how I want to play it. That's the deal. I, I want to see what I'm, I want to play it some way where I'm having fun. <laughs> and I haven't found that way yet. All right. This hole right here, Sniper. Katana or Quasar. And this is a red line issue deal. We're at Min Club, which is 1.5 per ring. But I'm going to be hitting one per ring. So I'm making a big wind adjustment here. Four backspin, four right hand side spin. So I'm going to hit max even though I'm at Min. And that's where I'm going to start. And what I'm trying to do is come into, I was doing four backspin, four right hand side spin, and I was coming into this area right here. I think I was slight, I was actually what I was thinking about doing when I took the shot that's in the video that I set up for the playlist, is that I was thinking about moving a little bit further forward in my shot so that I was more on the flat, because there is a bowl, this little bowl, there's a flat spot at the bottom. So, and I was hitting it more on kind of the downhill. But I'm going to be working on this spot right here. And I'm going to start my week off with one per ring, even though I'm at minimum club. That's a 50% wind adjustment, if you think about it. So if I had a 1.5 wind and I was doing one minimum club, it'd be one ring. But if I was doing max, it'd be one and a half. So we're doing a, uh, I'm going to just stick with the max number and work from there. I like this hole. This is not a hole that I think of as being a high percentage hole in one hole, but I think that it, I think that we can find the spot. And I'm going to talk to my teammate Kyle about this hole too, because this is the type of hole that I think that we can turn into a pretty high percentage hole in one hole. I like these types of holes when you come in at them like this. And we are definitely way uphill. Hole number nine. All right. One-on-one, -on -one. big tapa, big dog, marlin, from the tee box, my red line's right here, from the tee box, I take my ball guide and I line it up right along that line with a big topper, I want my, and then I'm going to take the wind out. I don't care which kind of which way the wind's blowing. I'm going to take the wind out so that I can address the side wind if it's headwind and if it's tailwind I can address everything. Max overpower, max max top spin, max right hand side spin, max right hand curl. It'll put you somewhere out in this arc. 
Now I've got a little bit bigger big topper. I got a level seven big topper and I actually am gonna have to take a little bit of topspin off and, and I can get way out there. <coughs> Very easily end up in this spot. With a big dog, your red line's gonna be somewhere in this neighborhood right here. Depending on how much distance you got out here, it could be as low as this. And so if you're up in this area right here, right dead center in the middle of that fairway probably with this kind of angle maybe two backspin maximum right hand side spin maximum right hand curl no overpower take the wind out bam hook it around you're on the green make your putt get your eagle and go on from anywhere out here that's the shot i take this this is how i play in one-on-one -on -one. i play this hole with it with a marlin and i hardly ever i would say one in ten times probably about ten percent of the time i don't get an eagle with a marlin a big topper and a big dog. Now, where I get screwed is when I go to the shootout because a lot of times you'll be needing a sniper or something or a guardian or something better than a big dog. So I end up getting screwed if I don't outright win the hole. But I outright win the hole a lot because most people will end up epic failing. And most people play this hole in one on one just like we play it in tournaments. They come out here and the goal is to get to this shadow. You don't have to get in, don't get greedy here. You don't have to get in front of that shadow. If you get in front of that shadow, great, but you don't have to. If you're just right at it, you're fine. And so coming from this spot right here and getting to that spot, it does not take much. I'm going to use a QB and a Kingmaker. If you got a rock, you can use a rock. I'm not going to use, I'm going to use a little teeny bit of curl just to make sure that the shot goes in the direction that I want it to go in. And what I mean by that is, is that when you're coming here, here's your starting spot. You're coming to this area. Your ball guide's going like this. So you're wanting to pinch it up against this right here so that you can swing your ball guide around to get into this fairway. I'm going to be two rings of separation away from that. And I'm going to put side spin on it to swing the club around. That's one of the reasons why I'm bringing a, a, a three side spin ball, or a three side spin ball so that I can spin it around and I don't want to have to use any curl. Okay. What's up, Buster boy? So when I so I don't want to have to use any curl. I want the shot to to come from here and with side spin just work its way to that spot. But what happens when I hit when you don't do any movement at all on your shot as far as like you're just hitting it straight forward and you hit it great to the left or great to the right, then the ball goes great to the right it, it it shots here great to the right and it's going to end up going fairly great to the right this is one of the reasons why too hold on damn dog <laughs> hold on all right buster i was just gonna <laughs> let me just leave it open okay sorry about that all right where, where, where was i I'm, I'm seeing if I can, I understand this conceptually, but I'm seeing if I can draw it out on a piece of paper. So if you're hitting here and you want it to end up right there and you're on this path coming through here, if you hit it great to the right on the first bounce, it's great to the right. And so this is your trajectory. So you're getting out here into this problem zone. If you put a little teeny bit of left hand curl, even just a little teeny bit, even though your original landing spot was to the right, the ball is still going to go to the left and you're going to end up almost in exactly the same spot as if you hit a perfect. If you hit it great to the left, this is where you start to have a little bit of problems. So this is why typically if I put even just a little bit of curl on a shot, I usually leave more room on that side of the shot. So I'd leave more room on the left-hand side. And the left-hand side, in my mind, is really epic fail because if you're in that sand, you are screwed. If you get out here in the rough, you could get out to the point where you can you could get maybe half or three-quarters of the way up this chute. If you epic fail out here, you could recover. You could make it over to the other side so that you can get lots of forward run. But if you end up screwing up in the sand, you're toast. And so coming around that band, I, I always want to leave myself more room on that side than I would on the outside. But it's a very tricky shot to get up in there. And one of the things about it is this here, this is a risk versus reward shot. 
if you make it to this spot, you have a beautiful shot coming to the cab. And you can use a sniper, you can use a horizon. And like I was talking about earlier with horizon, you know, when you get a horizon and it's 2.4 per ring accuracy. Okay, what would that be? That'd be a 50, that'd be a 40, that'd be a 30, so it's 30% accurate, 2.4. When it's 2.4 accurate and you hit it perfect, man, if you lined it up and you made a great wind adjustment, it goes right where you aimed it. <laughs> okay, right where you aimed it. But if you miss, you're 2.4 miles per hour off. So, I mean, think about it when you hit a one ring great with your extra mile, how far off you are. You're way the hell off. That's 2.4 rings on a QB or a rock. That's way off. <laughs> okay. But you've got a beautiful shot for Alvi here. What you don't have when you come on this side is any shot at Alvi. Zero chance for Alvi. Some shot at Alvi. Okay. For me, about a 90% chance for Eagle. Okay. If you can make it to that shadow or you're anywhere in the fairway over here, okay, you probably got about a hundred percent chance for eagle. I mean, it you can duff the next shot, but you got you, you're in the catbird seat. You get a great shot. You actually have a shot for Alby on this side of the fence over here. There's no such thing as a shot for Alby. If I ever make, and I take this shot a lot, if I ever make, and I don't think I ever have, if I ever make an Alby from this side, I hope that I have it recorded and I can guarantee you it was 100 percent luck. <laughs> Just from taking it that many times. Okay? It's like getting a hole in one of real golf. It's 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 just a crapshoot. But if we want to get an Albi on this hole, we have to come to this side and we need to get to that shadow. And I would bring the most accurate stuff that you have in your bag. For the drive, I think a three side spin ball, two side spin. For the shot going to the cup, you don't really need the side spin. Low wind would help. If you can get out to that tree. With a two with a two power ball, you've got a two power low wind. The th you're gonna have to work it based off of your clubs because if you bring out, you may go, yeah, yeah, I've got some some one power, some two power low wind balls, and they may work fine on the drive, but it starts to lengthen out. This is one of those types of of long or wood shots into the cup where we have to engage some topspin. And so the ball tends to run out a little more. It's always nice when we come into holes from distance where we can engage even just a little teeny sliver of backspin. Because if we can engage a little bit of backspin, the ball's, how it reacts is a little more predictable. And this is one of those ones where the farther back we are, the more topspin we have to put on in order to engage the cup. And when it hits the green, it can scoot across it and our speed can be way off. So... Bringing a low power ball may be fine for the first shot, but you may suffer on the second. Um, I'm going to bring out a three power ball because I know a three power ball gives me a really good look from here and it's pretty good distance with your wood. And so that means I'm going to be in Kingmaker, three side spin. I want to have access to that side spin for the drive. You can use the Titan though. You can use any of those, but this is how, but if you have any failures up here, you just put your eagle at risk. Now you're going to have to take an eagle shot from distance. All right. Those were the Kohong Resort holes. Sorry that took so long. I love these holes. I There are a lot of these holes that I really do like. I, I've played them quite a bit in Tour 7, and so I'm very fairly familiar with them. But uh, the shots that I actually take on these holes during tournaments are different because I don't normally waste bigger balls on them. My goal this week going in... If I if and I'll keep track on the on in my brackets obviously, but I'm looking for minus twenty eight as my start. Minus twenty four is the minimum score, but we need to be focused. We need to try and figure out which of the which of the eighteen holes, which of the nine holes do we have the best opportunity to pick up a shot on? I think one of the par threes. I think the first par three. Is it the first par three? No, it's the second par three. I think we have a really good shot of making a hole-in-one on that par three. Um, I think the par fours, we can put ourselves into some seriously good spots to make uh, eagles on those. 
I'm going to be shooting for. I think I think I'm going to make my prediction that I think in my bracket that you're going to have to shoot a 28 plus, and I think whoever's in my bracket, if you shoot a 30, you win. I think that it'll be that type of course. But if we can figure out a few of these holes, or some people can figure out some of these holes, we'll have to see as the week goes on. <laughs> All right, that was the uh, Winter Sun tournament. All of them at the Kohong Resort. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe down at the bottom. Hit like if you like the video. And I will catch you on the next one. All right. This is the PS. I forgot all about when I was looking at this hole. I was going back and I was watching the video and I was looking at the shots. And I totally forgot the last time that we played this hole, um, I had asked my teammates to explore doing a max overpower hook shot. Because in the past, I've done the max or hook shot from here, trying to get this trajectory, trying to end up in this area. So you've got a short iron to the cab. And what I asked my teammates to help out with was to try a max overpower hook shot where we're on our arc for a red line. So we're out in this area with red line. We should be out in this area with red line, finding the spot out here where we can do the max overpower hook shot so we can get bounce number one clear the chasm bounce number two and then we're just on the trajectory we can take a lot of these traps out of play the only trap that we have in play is this chasm and we did work this shot out and i think by the end of the week this was the way that we were actually coming out it was coming out at from this direction so i was watching the video and i was like oh i totally forgot about that that was on the hole that's not on golf class notebook because uh nobody's updating the site anymore so i'm going to be working on this shot on hole number five that's going to be the way to work on it but there is so i think there is going to be there's going to end up being two max or repair hook shots you can take this one here trying to get out into the area and you can take this one here trying to get out into the same area but i think that we might have a better shot here especially the farther forward we can get the narrower this chasm gets for our first bounce to come over and so if we can get the uh pick a club that's got enough top spin to get us over the chasm and enough curl you know big power ball a big topper might work really well with this because of all the top spin and if you can get far enough forward in your shot so that you can push your arc so that you can come down through there you might get a lot of run so i'm going to be working on this side on hole number five but it was still good information in the video right <laughs> thanks for watching